Hi everyone, in this video you are going to learn about the basic architecture of FPGA. Basic architecture of FPGA, in the previous video I have explained about the design flow of FPGA that means how we are going to start the start writing the program on Vivado or Xilinx platform, later how to simulate it, how to synthesize it and how to create a netlist and bitstream files later we are going to dump onto the FPGA that part we have seen in the previous video in this video I am clearly explaining about the internal architecture of FPGA that means what are the various blocks we have and how they are interconnected what are the functions of each and every block I am going to explain in this video so we know FPGA full form is field programmable gate array FPGA stands for field programmable gate array so it is nothing but an array where a logic or group of elements are connected interconnected together that is what the meaning of gate array and programmable all these gate arrays are programmable reprogrammable any time we can change the internal program what we have written every time that means suppose this time i am writing under operation next time i can erase it and writing or operation or we can write any type of program so it's a field programmable gate array we can write we can design any type of logic circuit that we can require and later we can erase it and reprogram it that is the main advantage of this fpga <coughs> the basic architecture of fpga consisting of these type of logic elements see all these orange color all these are io pads io pads it is written here io pads io pad or we can also say io block io block so if you observe the fpga architecture all the io blocks are surrounded io pads are surrounded by this fpga board okay that means the feasibility of io board io pads is to connect with the external world okay that means we can connect on any side we can connect to top side bottom side left side and right side okay wherever we have the inputs that immediately or easily we can connect with the external devices without having a long wiring suppose i have at this moment i have a external circuit on the right hand side this is the device for which i want to transfer the data or from which i want to take the data if io pads are not available on the right hand side if they are available on the left hand side so the wiring should be done from here to here okay so as these are available on the right hand side itself we can connect with any of these IO pads required and similarly on any side wherever we require the data to be transferred or data to be taken from the external devices that we can easily done with the help of IO pads that are available Hope you understand the importance of IO pads, why they are surrounded by the FPGA board now. <coughs> that is first one. <coughs> Next one, the internal green colors are showing the logic block, also known as configurable logic block. Okay, green color, all these are known as configurable logic blocks. And these red lines are interconnecting wires, interconnects. Red lines are interconnecting wires. These are used to connect the data or transfer the data among CLBs, configurable logic blocks. And the blue color shows the switch block or switch matrix, switch block where the data can be transferred from horizontal line to vertical line. This is the FPGA architecture. Now I will write what are the important elements we have in FPGA. So FPGA consists of FPGA consists of first one IO block IO block or we can say IO pad IO pad and the second one configurable configurable logic block we can say clb is the heart of fpga or a fundamental block of the fpga configurable logic block and interconnects 
enter connects next one switch matrix enter connects and switch matrix so now let us see the individual operation of each and every element here we can say logic element all these are logic elements in the fpga so first one io pad or io block what is the purpose of io block i told you already io blocks are surrounded by fpga in all the directions to connect with the external devices to communicate with the external devices so io block is used to communicate with external external devices io block is used to communicate with the external devices communication is nothing but to transfer the data or to take the data that means data can be transferred or it can be taken from external sources so data can be transferred to external devices or we can also take the data from the external sources this is the main importance of io block and another th important thing is io blocks are surrounded by fpga in all four directions io blocks are surrounded by fpga in all four directions to communicate with the other devices easily wherever they are okay this is about io block which are surrounded now let us move on to the second important element which is nothing but configurable logic block configurable logic block it is the internal architecture again it is having few more blocks this is second one configurable logic block we can say a configurable logic block is nothing but heart of fpga or it is a fundamental element of fpga clb is a fundamental block of fpga we can say it is a fundamental building block of fpga or we can also say we can also say it is the heart of fpga because entire logic operation is going to be established in this configurable logic block only okay because the logic function logic function is implemented in clb only that is the main reason why we are going to call it as a heart of the fpga or we can say it is a building function uh, fundamental building block of fpga and another important thing is clb consists of again clb internally have a different types of logic elements clb consists of first one lookup table lut lut stands for lookup table where the logic function is implemented in this lookup table based on the corresponding truth table and second one a d flip flop third one a multiplexer okay if you see how they are connected this is the internal architecture of fp uh, configurable logic blocker okay so configurable logic block as i said it consists of an lut lookup table and a d flip flop and a multiplexer here if you observe the lookup table is having four inputs we can also write it as a four input lut 
we can also write it as four input lookup table, a DP flop and a multiplexer. That means any type of logic function with a maximum of four inputs can be implemented using this lookup table. Suppose, sir, I have eight inputs or I have six inputs, how they are connected? They, in order to connect them, we have to use another configurable logic block. One CLB is limited with four inputs. So, if you move on to the second CLB, then we can implement up to eight number of inputs. If you move on to the three number of uh, CLBs, then we can implement up to 12 inputs. Likewise, we can take the number of CLBs that are in FPGA, C, it is 1, it is 2, it is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Suppose, for example, in our FPGA, there are 9 CLBs. There are 9 CLBs. According to our assumption, each CLB can have 4 inputs. So, 9, 4, 36, 36 number of inputs that we can implement with our structure what I have drawn here. Okay. And how many inputs will be having? Each CLB will be having 1 output. So, 9 outputs will be there. So, based on our FPG architecture, what I have drawn here, according to that, 36 inputs are possible, 36 number of inputs is possible and 9 outputs are possible with our circuit. Hope you understand. Okay. Suppose I have, see here, there are 4 inputs for this first CLB and this is having second 4 inputs. How they are interconnected based on these interconnecting wires. Okay, I will explain the when the interconnecting wires came into existence. Okay, this is the purpose of CLB. Uh, one CLB consisting of a four input LUT, this LUT can implement any type of logic function that we can have with respect to the four inputs, a maximum of four inputs based on the truth table what we have. Okay, so four input LUT. 4 input LUT is a logic element where the logic function is implemented, the logic function is implemented based on truth table based on truth table of the logic circuit based on truth table of the logic circuit this is the main important thing with respect to this lookup table we call it as lookup table okay and the second one is a d flip flop d flip flop we know d flip flop is known as the data flip flop or delay flip flop it is used to provide a delayed version of delayed version of the output of lookup table output of lookup table this is the purpose of d flip flop and third one, multiplexer, which is a two input multiplexer, which is a two input max. This two input max is used to, it is used to select either direct output or a delayed output delayed output of LUT okay so if you see this diagram configurable logic block consists of a lookup table four input LUT a D flip flop and a two, two by one multiplexer it is two by one multiplexer so D flip flop is used to create or uh, add some delay which is equal to the clock pulse the given clock pulse it is the reset pin suppose if you want to erase the internally stored data in FPGA that can be erased using this reset by passing one on this line then the data in the D flip flop can be erased and again refreshes the flip flop with a zero input output 
and we are giving a clock pulse with a certain time period. This time period is the delay that we are having from here to here. One is the multiplexer is having one output directly from the LUT and another one is the delayed version of this D flip flop. Okay. Based on the selection line, this will be the selection line. Based on the selection line, any one of these two outputs can be selected. This entire thing is done in the case of configurable logic block where the logic function is implemented and gives the output. Suppose if I am having and operation A and B is there, then two inputs we are using and these two inputs left vacant. Then we are passing the signals on this A and B and the corresponding logic function is implemented with here where the lookup table is and the output is taken from this direct output so that A and B operation is going to be done here. This is the way how CLB is going to be used. In the next video, I will explain the interconnects and switch matrix. The purpose of interconnects, how they are using and they are connecting the configurable logic blocks. And later I will explain what is the internal structure of switch matrix. Again, switch matrix is used to connect all these interconnecting wires. What are the internal structures we have with respect to the switch matrix, I will explain. Thank you.